several wind energy committee meetings. Um, I have a brand new grandchild. So that's been the, the taking up most of my time. Other than that, I don't have a whole lot to report either. So we're gonna move on to unfinished business. Being none, we're gonna move to new business. Item 11A, discuss and consider approving collective bargaining, bargaining agreement with operating engineers Local Union Number Three AFL CIO regarding the terms of employment, working conditions, compensation, and benefits for the represented employees of the district. I don't know why this thing is giving me a hard time. Can you advance it a couple of slides, Bindi? That one. So within the collective bargaining agreements uh, with the union, first and foremost, I really want to thank the union for uh, working really closely with us. We and also the offshore, I'm sorry, the uh, Labor Relations Committee, Aaron Newman and Stephen Coleman. Um, we've been meeting and it's pretty much continuously since February and we're able to complete the uh, bargaining agreement with the operating and en engineers. So it's a three year agreement that's going to go through June 30th of 2026. Um, as part of the new minimum wage requirements, we're agreeing to reclassify the marine assistant and the boatyard job classification to class three on the salary schedule. And then we, um, last year we created a second shift and that was really to have uh, increased security on Woodley Island Marina between 3 p.m. and 12 a.m. and also to do janitorial and other things uh, at night. And so we there's gonna be a dollar an hour shift differential uh, for that second shift. And then we clarified that the work hours for the office employees are eight to five and the field employees are 7.30 to four uh, because the office employees take an hour lunch and the field employees have a half hour lunch. Um, and then we also committed to giving the work schedule 10 days prior to uh, posting the schedule in case there's any conflict that the employee has. Uh, probably the biggest, one of the biggest items that we did is we're shifting- um, Go for a mark. Uh, plans into the CalPERS uh, health insurance plan from what our current health plan is. And we are uh, shifting into uh, the cost sharing on the premium uh, to uh, district would pay 85% and the employee would pay 15% based on the difference between the CalPERS gold plan and the CalPERS platinum plan. Basically, the midpoint is where that is at. And uh, that's significantly different from what the current uh, health insurance is where the, the district pays 100% for the employee, um, and then 
for a two person household, uh, they uh, pay, the employee pays $89 and the district pays the rest. And for a family, the they play, pay approximately, I forget exactly what it is, $189, I think it is. Um, and the district pays the rest. And so we're switching into this 8515, which results in fairly significant savings uh, for the uh, the district. Um, but to compensate the employees, we're giving the employees $2 an hour salary increase. And that's to help to cover the additional uh, deductible um, and also to help to cover some of the cost of the increased premium that the employees are, are, are taking on. And if an employee opts out of health insurance, if their spouse has health insurance someplace else and it's qualifying, uh, then we would pay the employee $400 and then uh, we would not uh, have to pay any additional health premium. Um, and then a couple of the key things that go with switching over to CalPERS is that this there's basically a, a retiree health uh, uh, insurance would continue through life by switching over to the CalPERS. And so if an employee retires from the Harbor District, then we would be going under what's called the CalPERS minimum unequal method. And under that system, the district would pay, it's currently set in 2024 at $157 per month. And then the employee would put, or the retiree would pay the, the rest of the premium costs above the $157 uh, per month. Um, and so that was all part of the negotiation. And currently all of the Harbor District employees, when the, when the Harbor District was originally set up, none of the employees are eligible for social security. And so in other words, in the paychecks that the Harbor District employees have, there's no social security deductions taken from their paycheck. And so therefore, if they start out as an employee with the Harbor District and work their entire career, they would not be eligible to receive social security benefits. That's the current system that we're in. And so we agreed, and really this was a district initiated item that the district will begin the process to uh, get employees signed up for um, social security benefits. We think that's gonna take 12 to 18 months to take place. And there's an additional startup fee that goes in. And then at that point, uh, once we get into the system, then the employees would have a standard uh, social security deduction but at that point, they would be eligible for Social Security benefits uh, when they re reach the Social Security age. Go ahead, Mindy. And then lastly is there is uh, a salary increase of $1.50 per hour retroactive back to July 1st, 2023. And then uh, next July, there would be an $1.25 an hour. Um, and then the following year, July 1st, 2025, there would be an additional $1.25 uh, uh, per hour wage increase. And so that is the, um, the primary changes to the collective bargaining agreement. And what the staff recommendation is, is for the to authorize the uh, board president to sign the bargaining agreement, and then to direct staff to prepare a similar salary schedule for the mid-management employees that would reflect a similar pay raise and switching over to the CalPERS uh, health plan for the management employees, similar to, because we can't have two different uh, uh, health plans. Can't have management on one health plan and the employees on another. You have to be in one, one plan. And then to direct staff to coordinate with CalPERS and uh, the Social Security Administration to begin the process to set up and transfer those programs. Um, we anticipate coming back to the board probably in uh, November time period with a resolution uh, to CalPERS uh, that the board would sign uh, and then authorize us to begin the enrollment period into the CalPERS uh, health insurance program. And so that's that's my report, and I'm, I'd be happy to entertain any questions. And I just, again, wanted to thank uh, Aaron and Stephen for uh, all the times that we met on this issue. Do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve collective bargaining agreement with Operating Engineers Local Union number three, AFL-CIO, regarding the terms of employment, working conditions, compensation, and benefits for the representative employees of the district. And I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just I just want to be sure I understand this well because I'm not on that on that committee. You know, before I, I commit a vote to it. Um. So so this was done through collective bargaining with 
with union yeah. representatives. Yes. And is the Social Security signing up for Social Security because they were in a pension program and therefore didn't have to do Social Security? So as we as they sign up for Social Security, will will that affect their pension program in any way? Just augment it, right? It will affect their uh, Cowper's uh, pension. They will be getting um, if they if the ex so in other words, when we enroll in, in the Social Security program, the existing employees they can con they can vote to opt out and not participate in. Right. And so, if the existing employees if they choose not to go into Social Security, they can opt out. But all future employees would be required to participate in Social Security within the Cowper system. If you like what we currently have, you if you're not in eligible for Social Security, you get a little bit higher um, of a CalPERS pension. And so when we switch this over to Social Security, then the employees will receive a little bit less of a CalPERS retirement if they opt into the Social Security program. But that's a voluntary thing, and it will be up to the individual employee to make that decision. But overall, they'd have a better retirement situation. Um, it's an individual case by case basis, mm -hmm. but as a whole, is that you know if you if you start out working for the district and work for you know say thirty years uh, for the district, then you would receive you know what you, the amount that you the full amount that you would be eligible for Social Security, just like anybody else. Plus, you would receive the Calpers benefit which it would be a significant more than what they're currently receiving. Yeah, I know that there's a cost share and then there's an offset by the $2 raise. So I'm, I'm happy to, to see that. Um, and as someone who is through the university is on CalPERS Gold, I, there, there just really isn't a better deal to be had in Humboldt County. So, so I think I'm gonna be happy about it. Any other comments from the board? No, I would just say that this was the result of uh, many months of negotiations and back and forth. So I think there, this was a lot of their proposals. And, and from what I understood, they're, they're satisfied with this. So could I possibly, would you consider amending your motion? Because you just did the item number one to do the item number two, which is to direct us to do the mid-management salary schedule. Oh, I should have read the recommendation, huh? Yes, I, I amend my motion to direct staff to do those A and B. Thank you. Second approves. All right. Um, thanks for everybody that's worked so hard on this from the staff to to our commissioners because it's uh, it's really important to get through this process and, and to do it with a, some legitimacy and um, patience and compassion. Anyways, um, I'm going to take this to the audience. Would anybody care to comment on our collective bargaining agreement? Seeing none, I'm going to bring it back to the board. Um, I know something I didn't say is just that, and I know we all know this, but we have a very high quality staff and they, they deserve and as uh, every bit and as we continue to grow, I hope we're able to continue to add more benefits. Well said. Good set there. Um, okay. So this is not a resolution. So we're just going to say to all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Um, so we have a collective bargaining agreement. Well, we will as soon as we sign it. Mm -hmm. um, very good. I'm going to move on to item B. Yeah, Consider it. Thank Consider you. adopting resolution 2023-17, an initial study mitigate initial study, mitigated neg negative declaration, and establishing findings relative to and approving Harbor District Permit 2023-02 with conditions for the Manila Community Service District flood reduction and drainage enhancement project. There you go. Mm -hmm. Who writes these? Say that three times fast. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, I'm going to make sure the next one has a much longer title than yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been winning. So <laughs> certainly, you've been winning. 
Uh, so following your lead uh, in past meetings for district permits, I've kept this relatively brief. All the details are in the staff report provided to you, um, but I'll just give you a quick summary. So here's staff recommendation, which is effectively to adopt the mitigated negative declaration and approve the district permit 2302. Uh, I think it's always good to just clarify what part of the world we're talking about. So uh, here in Humboldt Bay, zooming in on that area around Mad River Slough, and then zooming in again here, the Manila Community Service District is working on a um, stormwater drainage improvement project in that general area, and then uh, around Young Lane, and then zooming in uh, just a little bit to the south of there, in this general area here, uh, Peerless Lane and Mill Avenue. So both of which are stormwater projects. Mill CSD has already completed CEQA for this, which uh, is required before we can approve our permits. Um, so the project effectively consists of improvements, uh, including clearing and grading of existing drainage, ditches, bioswales, replacements of failing or undersized culverts, new culverts, drainage ditches, bioswales, and rain gardens. Uh, the goal of the project is to reduce flooding, increase climate change resiliency, and enhance ecosystem services. This is in your staff report. Just zooming in, this is you know the uh, the project, uh, the different components of the project. It's a visual summary, and then at the other location, a simple visual summary of what's happening. And. Their staff recommendation. Thanks, Rob. Motion on that yet? No, I do not have a motion. I'll make a motion that we adopt an initial study, mitigated negative declaration, and establish findings relative to the permit application and approved permit 202 with conditions for the Manila CSD flood reduction and drainage enhancement project. I'll second that motion. You're not going to read the whole thing. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Yeah, I have a question, um, Rob. I mean, some some of this, you know, in reading the report, it seems like a, a, a fair amount of it's really operations and maintenance. And then, you know, and then there's a few, you know, there's some new construction, but some of it almost seems like best management practices. What, what really keyed the need for an initial study and, you know, mitigated negative, uh, mitigated negative declaration for this? Uh, well, so as the, opposed to just exempting. Yeah. Yeah. The Manila CSD really did the CEQA document mm -hmm. and we are uh, adopting it as a cooperating agency. Okay. Because the California Harbors Navigation Code says that we have to issue permits for any project that touches tidally influenced waters yes. and the edge of the culvert touches tidally influenced waters, which triggered our involvement barely. Uh, and so uh, the resolution finds that we think that the CSD did an adequate job with CEQA. If mm -hmm. they did more than is required, you know, uh, that's that's fine. But we, you, what you would be adopting tonight is you're finding that their CEQA document is adequate and approving our permit. Good. Glad to hear we're not part of government overreach in some way. All right. Good. <laughs> Any other comments from the board? I'm going to take it to the public. Would anybody care to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to bring it back to the board. I have a motion and a second. This is a resolution, so I'm going to need Larry to do a roll call. Commissioner uh, Benson? Yes. Commissioner Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Newman? Yes. And President Dale? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, so now we are moving on to item 11C, consider adopting resolution 2023-16, a resolution adopting an initial study negative declaration and establishing findings relative to and approving Humboldt Bay Harbor Recreation and Conservation District permit 2022-06 with conditions for the Mad River Slough shell Shellfish Nursery Project. Oh, please. All right. Uh, so this is a great project. The applicants are in the audience. If you had questions for them, uh, same as last time, I'm going to give you a basic summary, but the details are in the staff report. I don't know why that thing doesn't. You noticed that before. Yeah. 
Uh, staff recommendations to uh, adopt. This time we are the lead agency for the CEQA documents. So adopt an initial study, negative declaration, no mitigation, uh, and approve permit 2206 with conditions. And those are our standard conditions. So uh, back to geography, just what part of the world we're talking about. That's Arcata on the right. Uh, we are zooming in up here, um, up in the upper end of Mad River Slough. Uh, it's a former uh, oyster cultivation site that's being reestablished. Uh, the project's to restart a previously operational shellfish nursery utilizing a combination of existing upland seed setting facilities and upwelling tanks and a new flupsy and water intake rafts in the Mad River Slough. Uh, the action includes adopting the CEQA document and approving a harbor district permit. This map is shown in your staff report summarizing the activities that they plan on doing. And your staff's recommendation. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the resolution. I'm going to read it like I did. Uh, no. Second. <laughs> I'll second. I have a like motion. The, the resolution and permit. Yes. Motion and second. Any discussion from the board? I'm curious if there are. are you know, as there's more and more recreate just to you know fit with our recreation mission too as there's i see more and more kayakers up mad river slough and i'm just wondering if there's any any concern uh, about uh, recreational use of that that area and compatibility with the with the shelf it, it is far up the slough but definitely kayakable in, in a higher tide uh my evaluation is that it won't have any impact on recreational activities I, I believe they've they've experienced lots of kayakers, lots of recreational users mm -hmm. in the slough and compatible. They've been very compatible for decades. So I, I the the project sponsors are here. We could ask them because yeah, I think that's part of the water trails program. It is in there. So I just was just curious about that. I didn't read anything in the report about they're it. probably part of the water trails. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would um, say, as proposed and what you would be approving, none of the equipment would interfere with kayaking. Okay. Yes, thank you. That's correct. Um, so we, I'm going to take it to the audience. Anybody from the audience care to speak? Well, I'll, I'll say something just real quick. Bill, please step up to the microphone and tell us who you are and where you're from. And my name is William Rich. My wife Kimberly and I are uh, on this. This is our this is our gig. Uh, thank you very much, commissioners, for considering this this, this permit uh, and staff and and uh, really go uh, Vanessa. They go to work hard and folks here in the audience who also help. And we think this is a good project. Um, we look to you guys as our partners on this, uh, and uh, you know we trust that you guys are going to be looking out for us also. You know, lots of projects coming for the bay, um, and, and and you know the shellfish industry is is. Is also important, and so um, we look forward to working with everybody here. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Bill. So I have a motion and a second. Taking no, no, no other comments from the audience. Um, the board has discussed it. All in favor? Oh, it's a resolution, please, Larry. Commissioner Newman. Yes. Commissioner Coleman. Yes. Commissioner Benson. Yes. And President Dale. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Go to work. Let's get yeah. this going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your entrepreneurial spirit in Humble Bay. Appreciate it. <clears throat> um, all right, moving on to item 11D. Consider approving a $200,000 budget adjustment to account number 52109, outside services for additional consulting services. Yeah, staff recommends that we do this a budget uh, appropriation is that um, included in your packet is kind of a cash flow analysis and when we prepared the budget. And um, we uh, we looked at the budget and that we have a lot of projects that are going on right now. And we have had some staff turnover in the uh, last couple of months and we're gonna have additional staff turnovers in the coming months. And so in order to prepare for this transition that we're having um, and we're in this career, really key critical moment in a number of different projects that uh, 
we were discussing this with the offshore wind subcommittee and we really felt like it was the time to make an investment in uh, the projects. And there's a number of things that we are really kind of looking like we need to focus on. Um, and on the, on the one hand is on the new terminal project that we, it's pretty apparent that in this stage, we need to do dramatically increase our outreach to the, to the community in the, to the tribes, to the region. But we also need to increase our lobbying efforts at the state and the federal level. And so that's going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort to kind of coordinate all of this uh, community outreach, uh, lobbying, working with all of our partner agencies. At the same time, um, we just uh, submitted a uh, uh, 400 and approximately $425 million grant application for $865 million project. Um, in order to get those those kinds of money, they don't just don't give those to you uh, unless you really are out there convincing people that you have the project that you're ready to do. And so the reality is that $865 million is just the phase one of the project. Our project needs about $1.5 billion. Um, and that's what it is today. And so in order to really be competitive, we need to be out there and coordinating with our consultants and other people to uh, to really convince people that this is a great project. And so the offshore wind isn't the only thing is we've come to you and we've talked about um, the Shelter Cove uh, jetty reconstruction project. This is a complete reconstruction of a jetty, the environmental review that's gonna to have to take place down there to get the coastal development permits and completely rebuild the jetty is a big project that we're just about ready to get undertaken. And there are several other projects that we have. And so with that, we really did a close look at the budget and with maintaining uh, the minimum $650,000 uh, reserves, we, we believe that, um, We'd like to recommend starting with a $200,000 appropriation at this level. And that would give staff the time to really do some direction to come up with what are the strategic plan and the consultant and the staffing needs that we have. Um, we the, the, the recommendation is to do this one time and then we will likely come back a second time um, likely in November or December time period after we complete the dredging operations here because we need to make sure there aren't any uh, significant cost overruns on that project and we don't want to overcommit. And that project should be completed uh, by the first part of November at the very latest, even if we even if we get a, an extension of the, the time period. Um, and so um, overall, we're looking to, for the board to, approve 200,000 and we'll probably come back with an additional 100 to 2,000 appropriation towards towards the end of the year um, as we're moving forward with uh, our transition uh, planning. So I'm available for any questions that you might have. Um, and that's my recommendation. Uh, yeah, I have, I have a question. Um, you know, I mean, for, first of all, we, we, we've got to get work done and, and we need help to do it. And we're a little bit hobbled and, and my hat's off to our staff for how much they're keeping afloat, um, really being understaffed. And I know that there's, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with consultants. I've been a consultant to the district, so I shouldn't be speaking out of out of, out of turn. But, you know, I also want to make sure that we invest in in, in staff. And it sounds like this isn't precluding um you know a future ask to to put that training into into staff so it so you know as much as we can do in house we do and 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 to reduce our our reliance um uh on on consultants you know kind of over over time um so is what i'm seeing here what i what, what i expected to vote on was two hundred thousand dollar budget not not earmarked specifically for consultants that that could also be staff but in my understanding of this motion correctly that this is definitely earmarked for consultants and not for staff at this time what we're yes in this account we're asking this to go into the consulting services uh -huh. because we feel like we need to get started on the process but then when we come back in um in november, in november december right. time period for an additional hundred thousand mm -hmm. approximately we that could go towards staffing or other things at this point kind of really the discussion is um we would 
there's really is two parts of this. In the first place, we're not going to spend two hundred thousand dollars in the next yep. couple of months. Right. Um, yep. And what we're really asking the board to do is to tell us to um, to come up with a, a plan for two to three, three to four hundred thousand dollar range that staff believes that we're going need in order to implement this project. And there's probably going to be a short term, you know, a midterm, and then a longer term strategy. Um, within this, um, but really, it's we we can't do that with a uh, honestly we can't do a jump start with staffing. That's a long term investment. Um, it's it's not we all want to do staffing too, mm -hmm. but we we're at a point where we really need really trained professional services that you can really only get from consultants. Got it. Thank you. So I need a motion and a second, if anyone would be so kind. I'll make a motion to approve the two hundred thousand dollar budget adjustment. Second. Um, thank you. Any other any other comments? Any other comments from the board? No, just uh, or I guess yes. I, that I agree that this is necessary, and we need certain expert level. Uh, work on some of these things coming up. In fact, I'm expecting this ask to be significantly higher than this in the, the coming year, I, I would imagine this. I mean, I if I'm surprised at anything is how small the number is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think it's a start. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's what our goal is. This money is in our budget. We have, we just, we just relocated funds in the budget. Um, and I think we are like, like, uh, like Larry said, we are we're in this place where we need some we need some help, we need some advice, and this is going to help us to do that. I think what what you and I and what we all need to start thinking about is our strategic plan and that planning effort, which is going to take some funding and some time. We don't have the time right now, but we are we're going to have to put some time into that. And as a board, identify stakeholders, you know, schedule meetings. Um, outside of our board meetings and and go through a long drawn out stakeholder process. And that's going to be stakeholder input process. Mm -hmm. And that will be telling for us. But that's that's not what this is all about. Um, so I think, are you done? Mm -hmm. Are you all done? We'll take it to the audience. Anybody care to speak on this item? Seeing none. I am going to bring it back for a vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, we will move on to item 11E, discuss and consider approving employment agreement with Chris Mickelson and discuss succession planning for the role of executive director. So, uh, well, first and, and foremost, it was I saw there was an article in the Lost Coast Outpost today that said that I was going to be retiring at the end of this year. And uh, so, yes, I am retiring at the end of this year. And so uh, it's time to do uh, succession planning. And the first step in the succession planning uh, is my recommendation is that the board approve uh, a contract with Chris Nicholson um, as the new executive director of the Humboldt Bay Harbor Recreation and Conservation District. Um, I think Chris is going to do a, a great job, and I wholeheartedly recommend him for that. Within the transition plan is that uh, even though my contract would go through go through the end of of the year, that um, we would take the the we're we're starting to do strategic planning right now, uh, looking at the budget appropriation that the board did, of how the staff is going to all work together, and what the plan is uh, in this transition, but. Uh, um, the way the contract is is laid out is that uh, Chris would be the executive director effective December 1st, 2023. Um, I would stay on through the month of December and help to kind of close out projects uh, and uh, do other things, uh, including cleaning the toilets, uh, if so directed by uh, uh, Mr. Mickelson. So my recommendation is to approve the employment agreement uh, for Chris. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion second? I'll, I'll make move. a motion. Oh, go ahead. 
So moved. Okay. In the second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Um, also, why first I guess I'll say even though you know we're we're gonna have you around we'll here, over here, have you around here we'll for a little have. while to kick around still that uh, you know I can't say enough about the difference between where the district is now compared to where it was when it started. So I really thank you for all that. And I think keeping on the, on a good forward path is very important. I know a lot of discussion and thought has gone into this decision. Uh, I think it's the right way to go. We have uh, a fantastic uh, staff right now, to his token, how great our, uh, our workers are, our staff are, but our, you know, our management staff is equally, you know, commendable and the work that they're doing. And I think there's a great plan, an opportunity for strategic planning, but a great, uh, uh, a great plan for how the work can be held up by a lot, a lot of different roles. So I'm very happy about it. Uh, look forward to giving you a really hard time okay so you know, over the coming years so that should be fun and yeah i'm all in favor of this i just want to say did it all that you guys are doing a great job and looking forward to the future and you're really not going to leave or keeping your around so it's, it's... well i know like the last few times you tried to retire we just refused to, ask, <laughs> so you to stick around so i don't yeah. know if we can get away with that again but <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's good in organizations to to have dynamic change, and and um, and we're super fortunate to have such deep talent um, in our staff, and 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 um, there was there was you know consideration of 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 you know other folk um, you know as well um, you know for, for for this position, and um, uh, we just we just really support the staff and in, in in their roles, and we want to keep incentivizing our are the, the good staff that we have to stick around and and make sure that they're um, getting the support that, that that they need and incentives to to stick with the Harvard district because we are just starting a very long journey and uh and and you know it will it will behoove us to um you know to keep consistency and transparency and, and communication and clarity of of roles between all the, the staff members and and I, and I see that we're going in that direction. And so that's really, really pleasing. And um, congratulations um, to to uh, Chris Mickelson. So I, 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 you know, I couldn't, I don't have a whole lot more to add than what these fine folks have said, but I am always impressed with all of you, not just from a, uh, professional staff, but your ethics, your desire, your concern for our constituents and our local community and your ethics and always striving, always striving to do the right thing and not just the right thing for you or your friends or your buddies or, you know, to do the right thing for our community. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm damn proud of you. And so I, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, makes our job a lot easier. Um, and I think we, we all appreciate you for the work you do. All of you. I mean, even you, Ryan. Um, <laughs> sorry. So uh, I, I am looking forward to this. Congratulations, Chris. Um, and, and I'm, I think this district has changed tremendously in the in the time that I've been on it um and I don't think that's going to even compare for what's going to happen in the next 10 years this place is not going to be um the same and we're going to all grow tremendously um and it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting to keep it us with what we've got planned so I, uh, I look forward to that and look forward to helping and working with Chris and Rob and Ryan and not Larry. Um, and you, Mindy. <laughs> the, the quiet one in the back always does the most work. And I think we recognize that as well. Um, 
And not that you're quiet either. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so, do you, you want me to cut you off here? Yeah, we, yeah I, was, I just was going to name you the new Pat until I started rambling. <laughs> um, all right, so I have a motion in a second. I'm going to take it to the audience. Anybody from the audience care to speak on this item? All right, I'm going to bring it back to us for a vote. Um, all in favor, please signify by saying yes or aye. Yes aye. Or aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. You're gainfully employed again. <laughs> um, now, now the fun begins. You want to see what you got yourself into. <laughs> um, future agenda items. Do we have any future agenda items? Um, okay. I, I'd like to hear from, I'd like to hear where our status is with um, uh, uh, Dutton Miffler. What's uh, uh, um, Jane and folks. I'd like that status Moffitt update. Nickel. Moffat Nickel? Moffat Nickel. I call them Duff and stuff. Which which part of it are you interested in? Well, just a status report on where our, where we're at in the process with their their timeline, um, and and how they're doing, where we're at. We haven't heard anything about the project or them from them in several months. So just for clarity, you're looking for a status report on the project yes. on the Moffitt Nickel Consultant, or no, on the project, the on project. the process through the project timeline where are we at on the timeline the funding the tasks um, associated with that i'm not sure they need to be here maybe maybe they should be here for our december meeting <laughs> no uh, but uh i definitely would like a uh an update from them is that possible sure yeah when we're going to Shelter Cove again, we keep bringing that up every once in a while. We have a Shelter Cove meeting. We'll be breaking the champagne bottle down there before long. So. Should we go before or after? Or during both? Let's go. Let's let's plan a meeting in Shelter Cove. As long as they're not breaking them over us. Larry should have one more trip down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's plan on doing it next month or the month after. So this is September, October. Doing our October meeting in Shelter Cove. I'll coordinate with the with the RID. With the RID. To see about giving the space. And would you like that to be a regular meeting or a special meeting? I I, I think a regular meeting would be fine. Okay, so we'll cancel, we'll, we'll reschedule the meeting here and do a change of venue on the shelter call. Okay. Yeah. Um tell them we'll buy them dinner. That's an inside joke, isn't it, Aaron? <laughs> All right. I would like to see on a future agenda um, a, a follow up on the communications and reports correspondence received. Um, that, you know, tonight where you know we had we had the report by the Yurok Tribal Court and letter from Joe James from the Yurok Tribe and letter from Surfrider. And I appreciate that the district um, responded to those. Um, Larry, and you alluded to that. I didn't see the response in my packet. Did I? Did I miss that? In the in the packet, I, um, no, but I can send that to you. I, I I probably should have done that. Is that it was in the Las Vegas Outpost? They published the entire letter, but I'll I'll send you the letter. Well, they did. I, okay, uh, you sent the letter to yeah, I think I, to all of us. I thought I, I did, yeah, but I, I can it. resend it. I'll so it was. I just I just missed it. I can review. Yeah, I can, I can review I'll my send it my fine. email. I just think a I, report I, of that situation would be nice. Yeah, I I I, I think that warrants you know um of some time for you know, in, in front of the public to, you know, to respond as well. It's great that it's, that we're putting it out in multiple ways, but I think those are concerns enough to, um, to not just the indigenous community, but to others in the community that it might be worthwhile to really, you know, to spend the time to just get a, get a more in-depth report on that. And, and this is a side issue of that, but there, there is a recommendation for us to reconsider our relationship with with Crowley and I I just I'm looking for an opportunity to speak about that as a board in a more formal way. Yeah. Can I have something for 
we have three cruise ships coming in um, all before our next meeting. So September 27th, um, October 2nd, and October 7th. So if you want any details on that, um, talk to me about it. The information is on the website, but um, we're having welcoming parties for all the ships. So come on down and participate and help us welcome people to our team. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Yeah, and we had that. Uh, the I guess it was technically called a canoe or a sailing sailing canoe from the Polynesian sailing canoe from out of Hawaii. It was there for a couple of days. So it's able to go down and see that. That was pretty cool. Um, sure, I'm likely going to be out of town for our October meeting. If we can talk, maybe I'm going to be out of town also about status. Yeah, can we change the date on our possibly? Meeting? Do you want to try and do that? You want to try and hammer that out now, or just like over the next over. You know, probably do that through email just pass yeah. it on here too because uh, yeah. i have no i have no problem changing the date and i don't yeah. know when the what's going to work for the red either so yeah i'll check what the availability with red and then i'll circulate that with the, the board on what the availability of their room is uh, and we're we may be gone the first week of october as well but um you, he is for sure but are you do you have a, are you gone for the week or are you no, I'm leaving that evening. Okay. I'm going to I was planning on going to Sacramento like well, it's halfway there. Midday. Yeah. It's... <laughs> well maybe yeah, maybe our family will want to drive down to like shelter cove on the way to Sacramento, going with the family. We're <laughs> leaving the parking lot Redway. Yes. Yeah. I'll be back in a few hours. All right. So we are about ready to adjourn. Any other comments for the good of the, the nature of the club? We're out. Congratulations, Chris. Congratulations. Mm -hmm.